reinforce the horse. Reinforce the horse. How are you doing? I'm good. How good. are you? Fantastic. All right. So, what are we going to be talking about today? <laughs> well, uh, I think you said something about you wanted to discuss a bit about writing. Yeah. So take it away, because I'm. Other than that, I don't know uh, what you had in mind. <laughs> All right. So uh, I guess riding is a very. Uh... And we're talking horseback riding. Yeah, horse, yeah. <laughs> horseback riding. Hopefully, yeah. So, anyways, riding is a very large step in training, as many of you horse trainers may know. Uh, I am a first-time horse trainer. Uh, I have. I mean, I'm training my very first horse, and I've had her for, uh, what, eight months now, and I have yet to get on her, and there's only a few things keeping me from doing that, but the training to ride is, like, you start the training as soon as you, as soon as they come home, and finally, when you're able to get on them, I bet it's this, like, magical moment. It's this, I mean, uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll be different now that we're, uh, you know, we're very, very connected. Um, I don't know. That's, that's something that I would be, I mean, I'm interested to know, even those of you that use, you know, natural horsemanship methods for training, uh, what's the first ride like? Uh, I mean, that's one thing I haven't experienced, but today I kind of wanted to talk about the, uh, the trust that I believe comes with the riding process and have experience with riding, uh, you know, with Mocha, Cody, uh, friends, horses, uh, horses at camp and just the, the ways that they acted toward riding. And I know you could, you could come in and, uh, you know, talk about you and Cody and your experience with riding. Yeah. So, uh, as I've mentioned before, riding to me, of course, was purely recreational. Uh, no, like, ranch job or anything needing to get done and no, um, like, competition or anything of that sort. Just purely recreational. Um, and I really placed... I would say I placed, ride, like, horseback riding when I got Cody uh, as my top priority, above and beyond anything else. And so my expectation... And getting my own personal horse was to ride and ride immediately. It, it was kind of like in my mind, like like buying a dirt bike or a quad or something like that. It's just like that's what it's there for. Um, wow, was I so wrong in that way of thinking? Um, and that was just you know a couple years ago. Uh, Sitting here today, it's odd for me to even voice that as my mindset. Um, because, and we've mentioned it before, it, you know, like they're living and breathing and they have feelings. And uh, Cody so eloquently and politely um, demonstrated his feelings to me, but I was 100% not in tune with any of them, any of the signs, uh, like I was looking for the big ones, like, you know, uh, you know, horse licks his lips, you know, gives eye contact, all those sort of cocks the foot, all those sorts of things. Um, but I wasn't in tune with the very subtle cues, uh, you know, an ear twitch, uh, slight shift in posture, not even a step, but just the subtle shift in posture, subtle movement of the head, no movement of the body at all, and perhaps just a difference in eye contact and positioning and, and energy, if you will, of the eyes. So now I want to ask so, you, since you've been riding Cody, say maybe recently, uh, is there a huge, a huge difference in your mindset and how you can communicate with him than when you sat on him for the first time? Oh, most definitely. So if I had to kind of explain 
how or yeah if i to explain that in more detail um it's kind of like you know a an electrical wire uh that either has a short in it or it's a brand new you know fi great greatly made uh electrical wire you know when there's a short circuit things don't go too right um and so when i first started with cody again being very green on my own in the world of horseback riding and horsemanship in general um i was very much short circuited uh it was like my the cabling, if you will, between Cody and me, like really didn't even exist, you know? Uh, and so when I would try to do something or ask him to do something, it was his patience and grace that allowed me to not end up with broken bones every single time had nothing to do with me like all him his patience his grace uh because as i've demonstrated in other conversations he wanted no he really wanted nothing to do with me other than the fact that uh i do think um you know we were kind of drawn to each other in the way of a, a partnership and you know we have talked a little bit about that in previous sessions and we will continue to kind of flesh out those details when it comes to partnering with your horse and, and how that relationship actually begins. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, yeah, there, you know, there was really no communication between him and I. So do initially. you feel, I mean, you're, you're kind of alongside me with training Willow. You're kind of retraining Cody, but do you, as like a, I guess we could say you're you're a horseman, a horse rider. Do you feel like you need the ultimate amount of communication to ride? Or do you feel like it's one of those things where, I mean, might as well just mount that horse because she's trained? I don't think, I don't think they, I think they are such awesome creatures that they don't require it. They desire it and they want the utmost in communication and connection with us but they're so incredibly resilient and awesome that they will work with what they're given or not yeah Th that is so true i i like that you bring that up because there are like i mean we've mentioned this before so many different ways to train a horse and neither being right nor wrong uh, it's a preference, and I mean, that's one thing I've learned through training is that it, it really, it all comes down to what your ultimate goal is, how much time you may have, you know, on all these other factors, uh, and the horse, I mean, the horses don't know the difference between the, this training method and that training method unless they're, you know, unless they've experienced them all and may even be able to see, you know, a choice for this one versus that one. But I don't know. I mean, I've never, I've never really seen them ask for a particular training method, considering we've been pretty set on one. Well, so, I, I'll disagree with you there, because, um, uh, working with Cody is a perfect example. So, uh, he's what I would call really sluggish, uh, in the round pen. Mm -hmm. His gait changes, and and what I've learned, uh through reprogramming and retraining mainly me not him <laughs> uh is that his sluggishness has nothing to do with being lazy or disrespectful or anything like that like that's scientifically proven um has absolutely nothing to do with those things um but it has much more to do with his trust or lack thereof in the partnership relationship. So uh, the more trust that's developed and the greater communication because of the trust 
and vice versa, the more fine-tuned he is and has become. Uh, like, now it's it's almost without any hesitation. It's like we go from a walk to trot. Just like... Before, that was like pulling teeth. Yeah. Yeah. And trainers in the past have been like, okay, well, you just need to, you know, essentially apply more pressure, but, you know, be very, you know, focused on when you release that pressure and mm -hmm. yada, 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 right? Like, you know, you don't want it. But I've had people recommend spurs in, in riding, you know, which uh, I'll never use the spur again. Yeah. Um, to each their own, I suppose, but they're not, they're unnecessary. Um, I'll never use them. Um, and I don't know. So the, the more we develop that trust and communication, the more fluid he is. And it's really similar to me, like in the world of like auto mechanics, like when the car gets a tune up. So if you can imagine like a vehicle with like dirty engine oil, uh, maybe a, a partially clogged fuel filter and an air filter that's you know more or less clogged if that engine even starts it's probably not going to run that that great and even if it does run and get from point a to point b it's going to be burning a heck of a lot more fuel it's going to be inefficient and the lifespan of that vehicle that engine is going to be diminished pretty rapidly and i feel that's uh really similar to like the horses like you can you can push and prod and tie and force and otherwise control them into doing things but as we know that ultimately affects their nervous system and ours by the way mm -hmm. um and it affects ultimately their lifespan and their quality of life while they are living um and and we know that uh, firsthand. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it. So that it, it's really cool. So as that relates to writing, uh, and I, I guess to like more directly answer a question that you did ask is like, how, how is that related? Right? You did ask that, right? To some degree? <laughs> or did I just go off on a tangent? Uh, how that relates to writing in my mind is the smoother the, the engine you know, the smoother the ride. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, and, I mean, like I've said, I've ridden horses. I've ridden Mocha. I've ridden Cody. haven't ever ridden Willow yet. And I am so convinced that she'd tell me to get on her now. I, I think mean, she wants you to ride. Earlier today, <laughs> she told me to throw this yoga mat that I am now sitting on on her back. Right. And she stood there with her head fairly low. And, she, like, she gave me all the indications that she was enjoying said yoga <laughs> right. mat on her back. Um, and so it kind of, like, she's given me a lot of indication that if I were to sit on her, she'd just be like, oh, hey, how's it going up there? That feels kind of nice. Like, she wouldn't really care. Um, and I, I, I guess I wouldn't really say that she wouldn't care. She'd feel like she trusts me enough to sit on her. Now, prior to getting Willow... I had watched so many, like, ways uh, using natural horsemanship of, uh, you know, training a horse to be ridden. And it was pretty much like you tack them up, you get them used to the saddle and, you know, bit, bridle, everything else. And, I mean, they're probably going to want a buck, so you got to get that out of them. you got to, you know, you got to, like, force them into staying still while you mount and uh, move their yeah, feet. Yeah, the horse has move. to learn to give to pressure and yeah, exactly. yield to pressure yeah. all the time. No matter what pressure stimuli it is, it's got to learn to give and release to that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's like exactly how Mocha was, and uh, it was interesting. Like Mocha was diagnosed with uh, gastric ulcers. Uh, I mean, within the past year of us having her, and it was like interesting because her whole mood changed. But I, I didn't know why. Like she'd always pin her ears, even when I went to brush her. Uh, and Mocha was never, like, she didn't really like to be touched. She was kind of like, leave me alone. But she was very, you know, she had, she was forced 
to be touched, and she knew she couldn't do anything about it because that was her. What, what do you mean she was forced to be touched? Like she she like, had to be. She had to stand there and be touched. She didn't have another. She didn't have a no thank you. She couldn't uh, say no and. You mean as a function of of her underlying training? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. she. It okay. was kind of like I'm gonna touch you. I want to touch you. You need to let me touch you. Right. And you can't do anything about it. You better just stand there or you're going to get Right. Your there was no choice afforded her yeah. in her training uh-huh. process. And right. so, I mean, when she got, when she got hurt or, I mean, you know, got this, this, I don't really know what, when she got her ulcers, mm-hmm. she started just acting weird. Like she was, uh, she didn't know how to stand there to be brushed and she would kick out and, and, uh, I mean, she'd like turn in and nip and do this like weird she'd like move away really quickly and then like throw her head like she was just acting like she like she had forgotten all of her all of her training um now i mean little did i know when the vet had come out he was just like well that's ulcers and and he was like that like it explains everything and i was like that's really interesting like had she i and i wonder still to this day had she had the choice to you know express whether she actually wanted to be brushed ridden saddled this, that, and the other thing, um, she, I would have caught that a lot sooner. Or would the question is like, would she even have developed ulcers in the first place? Yeah. It's, you know, um, and, and that goes into feeding regimen and stuff like that. Um, you know, I have a hunch that she wouldn't have developed them. Yeah. You know, or the case would have been much more mild. Uh, she did have a pretty severe case. She did. Uh, it was treated pretty well, and then, um, you know, as you're, as you know, I mean, she did get better, and and some of those quote attitude issues or whatever were were reduced. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, uh, you know. They weren't eliminated. Yeah. yeah. And even the riding, like the, the riding, when I used to go and like mount her, even riding bareback, like she just had this kind of like meh attitude about it. Like she didn't actually want to be ridden. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was submissive. She had to be. And, 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 a, and, and that's what we're talking about. So like, uh, as we talked about before, like communication, not control and, you know, our hashtag communication, not control. Um, and, you know, I would say she was shut down in a lot of ways, Oh yeah. you know, uh, and, and by shut down, like, I think, I, I think when I've heard a lot of people talk about horses being shut down, it's like the extreme side of things, but let's face it, like a lot of just like very subtle aspects of her emotional state was shut down yeah um to the extent like she didn't really like to be touched she didn't really enjoy um the human interaction yeah um with the exception of you to some extent Mm -hmm. but it's completely different in my mind than what i'm seeing unfold with willow and cody yeah uh, like, and this brings up an article that I read last year, um, and I can't even remember the location of it, but the essence of the article was that a, this small study that was done, their hypothesis was somewhat proven that um, horses don't actually bond <laughs> with or to humans. I remember that one. And... But yet, and they made mention that, like, it's well known that dogs bond with humans and are, like, scientifically proven. Uh, I couldn't disagree with this article and the the study more. Um, either that or I just don't really know what uh, bond connection truly is. But I would say that Mocha was pretty typical in the horse world. Oh yeah. And so my theory there and where I'm going at with this is um she would demonstrate uh you know 
like for most she probably didn't have a connection a bond and one could even say like she didn't even have a bond with you mm-hmm. i can't say that at all between you and willow or even cody and me you know like we're bonded like and however the horses do that and however we do that with them you know it in my mind it's a bond yeah and i don't need like i, I don't <laughs> don't need evidence yeah i need to like scientifically prove yeah. it i'm not a scientist <laughs> yeah seriously but and i mean i would totally agree like i've never and uh i mean i guess a lot of it came before with my inexperience with you know our training the way that we do now uh i've never had a horse tell me yes and no before willow uh, I never knew that you could train that before Willow. Uh, and, and some might watch that and be like, that's not what's going on. It absolutely is. Oh, no, they, they completely they, understand. They, they 100% understand when they're saying yes and when they're saying no. And I, I know this because, I mean, for example, training the blanket or the saddle pad. Um, it, I mean, for for a horse that has never seen a saddle pad or a blanket before... It's scary. It moves. It makes noise. It looks weird. It's scary. Um, and so the typical, uh, I, I would say, modern mentioned. type of approach to do that is wave it at them gently and get them to submit and release to that pressure. Instead, I had Willow taught to, well, I mean, long before training this behavior, she knows yes and no. She'll touch the cone for yes. She'll stand chill for no. And she, um, she was clearly communicating with me you know okay throw the blanket on my back and i'd go and throw it on her and she'd stand completely still she she kind of looked at me like uh that's kind of weird but she stood still with no force she had no halter on she wasn't tied up and uh you know she told me at a time like she would she would double tap the cone to tell me to take it off and so i'd take it off and she'd like take a sigh she'd take a deep breath and then next time she'd say no thank you and she would like cock her foot or lick her lips. She'd give me some indication that she was happy for me acknowledging her no thank you. And then she'd say yes again, go and throw the blanket on her and same same deal. Uh, and by the end, you know, when we took the Christmas pictures of her, uh, you know, of that, that blanket training, she was like, okay, go ahead, throw the blanket on me. And she was like licking her lips and cocking her foot with the blanket on her back. Yeah. And then today with the yoga mat, like, hey, that's that looks kind of like a blanket. That goes on my back. And that was really cool. Um, and so the way this relates to riding, I mean, and you've already demonstrated in some ways. I mean, like, you, there's no doubt in my mind that you get Willow out right now and, like, up alongside a mounting block and you can sit on her, no problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, you know, the reason why you haven't done that, you... You're hooves. being really smart about it, you know, her hooves and that visit and all that kind of stuff. And I I think paramount to those things is just you're not in a rush. Yeah, I'm and, not. And actually having fun developing that relationship and not putting more uh, pressure, writing or otherwise, on her Yeah. Uh, that she doesn't necessarily need to do at and the moment. I mentioned earlier, I mean, you start training for riding when you bring the horse home. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one thing, like, I... Uh, it, I mean, for me, riding is a very, it's fun. It's recreation. It's something that I, I love riding. I feel, I, I just, I don't even know. I just feel right. it feels freaking great. awesome. Yeah. I love riding. Uh, and so, you know, bringing home a wild Mustang, it was, and it's always been a dream since I was, uh, s- since I like was able to ride or to, to talk, like it's been a dream of mine to sit on a to to ride a wild horse i mean you've seen those cartoons those movies of like these people just like oh you know taming the wild horse and they get on them and they're just like loping or cantering or galloping just like bareback and bridalist on this previously wild horse and i'm like uh show me how to do that bucket list right yeah (laughs) and so it's been you know a dream of mine and uh you know i'm not saying willow's cooler just because she's wild Willow's cooler because simply because she's my friend, uh, and she that's really cool. She has this connection with me, and as much as I like want to sit on her and ride her, and as much as I feel like she would let me, I mean, there's other stuff that needs to come before that. Um, and man, I tell you that one day that I'm able to just sit on her 
and she I mean she'll tell me yes and no and yeah and you, you don't know. have you don't have and you guys will watch and listen to this all playing out Alyssa's not gonna have the typical problem of you know my horse bucks and chicks yeah and... A, a newly trained horse mm-hmm. you know um and that's not to say both of you are gonna be like super comfortable and a rainbow's gonna sprout out yeah, 100% and you know of the time. it that's we're not I'm not saying that I'm not either what I'm saying is is that you're so in tune and having such a open communication relationship to the, you are going to understand and see and acknowledge the subtle cues that she provides you if she's like hey I'm not comfortable with this yeah and instead of you saying well you're going to be comfortable with it it's acknowledging it and yeah. redirecting and you're regarding listening. her thoughts and her feelings and taking note of that and actually taking action on it and helping her before be you or her get into a uncomfortable space where somebody gets hurt yeah and i and so. that's like i mean yeah it's it's awesome it's super cool i'm excited she's, she's learned i mean through bringing her home it's been a very it's been a roller coaster but so fun and awesome and i mean since day one it's you know we've been preparing for riding we've been right you know practicing the yes and the no and walking with me and uh recently allowing me to you know asking she'll tell me to get on if i come and i i'll wave my hands yeah uh, put my hands over her back and i'll ask her hey can i get on and i wait for her to to like uh move her shoulders toward me and when she feels my hands she gets reinforced and that's the closest that i can get to riding right now uh that and you know the blanket but that man that's like it's a it's an accomplishment even there and i'm teaching her to back up for no thank you Mm -hmm. uh which is breaking a lot of natural horsemanship rules there but yeah um i mean it's just like that that's as close as we've gotten and the i mean the next step is getting her medical needs taken care of and hopefully you know getting us both comfortable to ride yeah Um, and i i think you're right on track it's gonna be i mean i don't think that it's gonna be entirely difficult but i think it's gonna be very emotional um yeah because i've never i've never sat on a horse that has told me to get on i mean my dad has he's he's done this with cody he's literally taught cody hey can i get on and if cody wants him to he'll turn in and he'll be like yeah go ahead and he'll stand there for him to mount and if he doesn't want to he'll like his ears will kind of go back not too not agitated just no thank you ears and then he'll take a step back and then look at him for reinforcement because he knows he gets reinforced. But I've I've only ridden horses that have uh, really not wanted me to be on them. Yeah. You know? I mean, Mocha it's, is a perfect example. I used to go to horse camp. And, I mean, you remember riding those horses. They were like zombies. Yeah. Um, so, on that note, everybody, uh, thanks for listening. Yeah. And uh, definitely... Uh, keep listening and watching whether it's on youtube or wherever you get your podcasts uh because we have a lot more in store as we further develop our relationships with our current horses and even bringing some new horses home so uh take care and we'll catch you on the next one thanks so much